Okay, now let's take a look at cloning vectors. Cloning vectors. Okay, what is a cloning vector? Well, essentially, a cloning vector is a modified bacterial plasmid. And cloning vectors must be able to, well, let's see. So they must have, or ideally, they have several restriction endonuclease recognition sequences in a multiple cloning site. Also, they must be capable of replicating in a bacterial host, usually a bacterial host. I think there are some, some cloning vectors that work in yeast, which is a fungus. So, and uh, they must contain a marker gene. And this marker gene allows us to sort of know if the cloning vector or plasmid is inside the bacterium. And so one example of a marker gene is an antibiotic gene or antibiotic resistance gene. Now, here is a typical, let's see, a map of a typical cloning vector. So like I said before, they're essentially modified bacterial plasmids. So, and let's say right here, in this little region right here, and let's say this is about 3,000 base pairs long, and that's a typical, that's a typical length of a, a common cloning vector. So this would be the location of the multiple cloning site. And the multiple cloning site has sites for lots of common restriction enzymes that are found in most molecular genetics laboratories like HINDI-3 or ALU-1 or SPH-1 or PST-1. And I think we will use, we might take a look at ECOR-1 soon. And we could go on and usually they, they should, I think the best cloning vectors contain anywhere from 10 to 20 different uh, restriction enzyme recognition sequences. Now, on either side, and this is a double-stranded DNA molecule, you can't tell it because I only diagrammed a circle there, but on either side of the multiple cloning site, or I should say the multiple cloning site is nested within a gene, often nested within a gene such as LACZ. And many of you might remember LACZ encodes what? Beta-galactosidase. Uh, which metabolizes lactose into glucose and galactose. And you might be wondering, well, how can the multiple cloning site be in LACZ? Well, scientists are able to engineer the LACZ coding sequence uh, to contain all these sites without disrupting, without uh, preventing LACZ from being functional by using that, that synonymous or by using synonymous mutations, right? By, by using synonymous mutations, you're able to, to put restriction enzyme recognition sequences within a gene without changing the, the codons, without changing the amino acids specified by the codons or changing the order of the amino acids specified by the codons. So, but that's a different part of the course, right? We're, we're no longer covering mutations. We're going on to uh, cloning. So on either side of that gene, you might find primer binding sites. So here would be a forward primer and here would be another primer. We could call this the reverse primer. So you, if you put a gene in here, or any other DNA molecule, you could use PCR with the forward primer and the reverse primer to make many copies of that fragment that's inside the multiple cloning site. Also, you can use just one of these primers 
in a sequencing reaction by Sanger sequencing, which we also just saw recently in a lecture, to determine the sequence of the molecule you put inside the plasmid. And remember, with Sanger sequencing, you would only want to use one of these primers. But you could do two sequencing reactions, and you could sequence, say, this end of whatever you put in the multiple cloning site with the forward primer, and this end of whatever you put in the multiple cloning site with this primer. So, and again, these restriction endonucleases, if I didn't mention this yet, they are going to be useful for opening up the plasmid and then putting in a molecule into that multiple cloning site. So, over here we would have an antibiotic resistance gene. So this is our, our marker that helps us uh, know when a bacterium contains our cloning vector and a origin of replication. Okay, so cloning vectors are used to clone DNA fragments. The DNA fragment may be a gene, it may be part of a gene, it may be an intergenic region, you know, it could be anything but it's a DNA fragment and to clone what that means is to take the DNA fragment, stick it into the multiple cloning site and then put that recombinant DNA molecule where recombinant DNA molecule means a DNA molecule containing DNA from two sources, put that recombinant molecule, in this case a recombinant plasmid, inside the bacterium and the bacterium will use the origin of replication to make many, many copies of that plasmid for you. So we've seen a, a, one way where we can make many copies of a fragment, that's PCR, right? You can also make many copies of a DNA fragment by putting it into a plasmid and putting that plasmid into a bacterium and having the bacterium make many copies of the plasmid with your fragment of interest. Uh, make many copies of that for you. So let's take a look at how to clone a DNA fragment and